What's up, fellow podcasters? Welcome back. This is part two of the podcast interview breakdown with Gary Vaynerchuk and Mark Zuckerberg. This video is packed with podcast interview tips and podcast interview questions for your next interview. Here we go. Did Pokemon Go, going back five years, ironically, was that something you watched carefully? Because I was like, holy shit, this is yeah. now happening. People are pulling off on this highway, jumping into the woods to find a Pikachu. I would have, lo- I'm pretty good at this game too, but I would have lost this bet, which was after that was such a smash hit through the phone, the fact that we're here five years later and there has not been another significant AR phone execution of that scale, surprising to me. What's your take on that? Yeah, well, I think Pokemon Go is, it, it was interesting and it's a, it's a real hit. It, it, it is it a huge phenomenon, but it's, I consider it to be more of a location-based game than an augmented reality game. The fact that, yeah. that it shows that you, that you kind of look at it through your camera um, I think it's somewhat incidental. I think the core mechanic is that you're going to a place. Um, and so you could do that with augmented reality or not, but there, there certainly is going to be a whole class of experiences that are like that. But in terms of things that, that really kind of augment reality, I think you have um, you know, filters, face filters, different effects like that, um, like what you see in Instagram and, and Snapchat. Yep. I think that that's a, that's a real thing that that's, I think is real augmented yep. reality. I agree. Um, and certainly I think that there's going to be a lot more opportunity there once you get to um, these real looking glasses that can, that can put holograms in the world. So yeah, I mean, I, I would hope that by the middle of this decade, we can have something that's sort of like that fencing um, clip that I showed. Now, the other issue on that is you need haptics, right? So that way, when you when your sword hits the hologram sword, um, you get a sense of feeling from that. Um, so that's a whole interesting other area of research. And um, I'm not sure exactly where that will be by the middle of this decade, but that's another thing that we're working on because it's, it's clearly an important part of the whole picture is you need to be able to, um, you know, whether you're playing basketball or giving someone a high five or shaking their hand, you want to be able to get a sense of pressure back. Um, and that, that I think is just going to be an important part of the whole thing too. Yeah. And once again, where, what do you mean? How research who, who's researching what to figure that out and what technology is there? I wouldn't even know how to ask that because it's like, he's talking about the sword hitting something to get, to get the feeling that you are hitting another sword. Like who, who knows about that stuff? And with Gary, Gary is very good at predicting a lot of things. Just in case you don't know who he is, he's very good. Um, totally off topic, but I think it'd be interesting to, if I was just a random moderator, if this was a press junket or something, and we were all sitting there with microphones, be like, okay, you took a L on Pokemon Go and nothing ever came from it. But if you had to invent something what would it be what would you if you're or no if you had to compete with pokemon go with a game what game would you come up with or what type of game or a concept something just to just because i know he's competitive too so it'd be interesting to hear his response when you make a move like this to get the organization to this next place you know i assume because i think about when i do things oftentimes it's more for my team internally than for the world. Like if they don't understand where I'm trying to take Vayner or my stuff, then I've got no shot. Was that a thought about this in a lot of ways of like, hey, I gotta make sure, because you're a massive company now. Like is this like, I need to give everybody a North Star internally of like, look, no, no, this is what we're doing. It's not just refining the algo or a filter on Insta or something of that nature. Yeah, I mean, you get this, because I mean, you're running a a, a company here and and, you know, it's like a lot of this is, is really just about uh, making sure that our team knows what we're doing, right? I mean, running a company is about setting prioritization and principles for where you want to go. And, um, and and I do think that it's the case that a lot of times the most effective way to communicate to the organization a level of commitment to something is to go say it externally, right? Because yeah, now people know that you're serious. You know? So, um, so we've been talking about this internally for many years, right? I mean, so we've been working on these VR devices for, for seven years. Um, we've just sort of steadily ramped up the investment uh, to the point where now in 2021, we're, we're investing $10 billion, more than $10 billion in this. So it's, um, it's still not the biggest part of what we do, but it's, it's very meaningful. I think that there, you know, you'd be hard pressed to find any other organization that cares as much about this and is putting um, as much energy into to building all these different parts of the future. And what I think you get for that is that Meta has become the premier place that if you care about these problems, you want to go work on them, right? So whether that's VR, we're building the best devices. AR, I think we're the furthest ahead in terms of actually building the consumer um, glass form factor and, and all the different research around that. You know, you mentioned all, any of the other problems around that, whether it's haptics um, you know, or a lot of the software or parts of this where people can interact. Um, you know, it's, we're, we're going to be the, the place where you can build all these different parts of the metaverse experience and then also weave them into Facebook and Instagram so, and WhatsApp. So, and so. 
And before they start going off on another uh, tangent, he basically said that they ha- they invested ten billion dollars into this research. Um, I it's like Mark, I know you have a ton of money, dude, but I and I know it's not stroking a check for ten billion, but when you're seeing that kind of money just go. Does that worry you at all? Do you lose any type of sleep? Do you get that <gasps> pit in your stomach? Like, or is it just another day, another dollar? Or are you are you just that confident? Like it could be thirty billion dollars. Like, what's your like or or what 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 amount of money would make you nervous? I mean, ten billion. It, what pff, Jesus. So, it's gonna be pretty wide. Pretty wide. You said something that really caught my attention. Obviously, the far majority of people, almost everybody who's listening to this that runs a company is not gonna be running a company of your scale. But what you said there was not only for your team, but did I hear the undertone there of the fact that you put out such a public commitment to this, you see as a recruiting vehicle to the best engineers in the game in this space? Yeah, well, well look, I, I just think that when you plant a flag and say that you're gonna go do something, you get haters and criticism. Of course. But you also get the people who actually care about that thing and wanna make it uh, happen uh, are attracted to the people who I think have the courage to go say, I'm going to go make this happen, even though it's really far off. So So, I I think that all these things are, there there are pros and cons to them. um, And and there's a a lot of complexity to manage. But I think that this is true, no matter what size organization you're you're, you're at, is that, you know, having the um, the willingness to just go say, hey, here's what I want to go build, um, I think certainly creates the self-selection dynamic where when you say, here's who I am and what I want to go do, um, then you get people who want to want to share that. And what I found in in my career is that it's better to not be timid about that, right? And and to not, um, you know, pretend that you're something that you're not, um, to try to appease critics. I think, you know, the more that you can just be honest to who you are and what you want to go do, I think you'll, you'll kind of get the right people to join your team. You'll get the right investors, you'll get the right partners. And I think that that's kind of how you, how you move forward. And that kind of answers the question of where you find people because people are hearing this interview and they'll be uh, interested. So that's a really interesting take. And what else did he say? He said something else just a second ago. Hold on one second. And, and to not, um, you know, pretend that you're something that you're not um, to try to appease critics, I think. So that'd be another good question is how do you take how do you take constructive criticism and but not a, appease the critics like what do you take like does something go off in your head like man that really is that really is a good idea or I'm seeing this problem come up a lot and then either that or just versus some guy in the internet being like this sucks or like I hate this change da 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 so it's like how do you how do you differentiate between constructive criticism and active criticism is if that's I think that's what he said the more that you can just be honest to who you are and what you want to go do I think you'll you'll kind of get the right people to join your team you'll get the right investors you'll get the right partners and I think that that's kind of how you how you move forward talk, talk to now I'm going crazy selfish I reference you and the company a ton in my content over the last decade as my macro thesis understand where the attention is it matters so much and I often reference your M&A that, uh, behavior. Can you just give me, because I want to know for myself, the insight on the Instagram deal, the WhatsApp deal. I, I'm going to leave Oculus off because that was like, I mean, I want to maybe come back to it in a few, little bit given the macro metaverse combo, but specifically Instagram and WhatsApp, which I thought were really of the moment deals. You know, I don't know if the corporation <laughs> acknowledges the attempt towards Snapchat. It was well, it was well talked about. I don't know the truth or not truth to it, but and again, when I heard it, or when it was reported, I was like, there he is again. He's 100% right, he's on it again. Like, you know, TikTok must have, must have been potentially a very different thing given the China-based guy and the complications. Like, but like, it, like I, I ver- I'll be very honest, every day when I saw Musical.ly way back, I'm like, Facebook's gonna make a play, Facebook's gonna make a play, right? Like, what is, am I, A, am I right that that is a big tenor of how you guys have looked at the world? B, what's that about? Also, why, why, like every, every social media platforms got their thing. TikTok is almost kind of like Vine and it's just these short little videos. Instagram is more photo, but now they're doing reels. Facebook, I'd be curious to, it's like, are they, are they worried about being the jack of all trades and the master of none? Like, I know they're trying to compete with TikTok, but why wouldn't they just keep it specific? Yeah. Um, so there are a lot of different of these kind of core social interactions that that people have in these apps that 
that um, the different apps have invented over time. And I'm, I'm proud that, that we've invented a bunch of them. Um, you know, going back to you know, some of the core dynamics around being able to communicate with people in your college, being like, you know, we were the first that built newsfeed, um, some of the core social API work. By the way, on the record for the youngsters, um, you know, you I'm sorry to interrupt. By the What's what, way, I apologize. By the way. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt while he's interrupting. Like, <laughs> Gary. By the way, for all the youngsters listening right now, when Facebook changed from you going to somebody's wall and leaving a comment to this news feed, it was fucking carnage. Pe- the number one page or group or whatever you guys called it back then was bring back the wall or whatever. Like, Mark, can you speak to that real quick? Just go back to your you know, young, young days. Like, th- when you guys made that move, the community within, forget nobody was even paying attention to you in the mainstream, all that stuff now. Th- within the world, immediately people lost their mind and now that is the core way every social network was built in. Yeah, I mean, look, I think when sometimes when you invent these things, it's, um, you know, I mean, they can be disruptive. And I think you, you just kind of need to have the commitment to, to see it through. But, you know, going back to your point about, about some of these other companies, you know, it's like there, there was a kernel with Instagram and with WhatsApp um, and, and also with, with companies like, um, like Snapchat. I mean, I yep. think that they've, you know, they, they created something that I think is really special and is awesome. Um, well, I just looked at that and I was like, all right, okay. There- I got to get this out or I'm going to, or I'm going to forget it. Uh, Cause I get lost in these interviews too. How do you know, like they knew that they were dis- he invented something and it was disrupting the space. People don't like change. Did you know what you were doing? Did you know it was going to disrupt the space? Did you know that the people were going to be pissed? And if so, you're getting 90% or what percentage of the platform was saying that this is a crap idea, but it's like, how did you know to stay with it? Or to or to change it or bend to the people, or is it just like, hey, we're gonna try this out? But it's like, even if you do that, how long do you try it out before you fix it and put it back? I think people often tend to look at these social apps and think that they're frivolous, right? Early on, and right. I think that they're like these these dynamics aren't important. And um, you know, oh, it's filtered photos, or or oh, it's um, you know, disappearing photos, or or w- whatever it is. But or that, it's you know, only these, or it's only for college kids. Yeah, I mean, well, we had that you know through our IPO and after when when our you know when when we were having a lot of business struggles. But it's um, but you know, I, I kind of looked at those and I was like, hey. I think I think that there's something that's important here. I think the world is probably underestimating this. And I also think that we have the skills as a company to go grow these things to reach more than a billion people around the world. And because we've done that with the core Facebook experience, and I think that there's two skills there. There's the there's sort of the building the social experience, and then there's the helping to ramp up a, a network around that. And that's that I think is also a core competence. So you know I don't know what would have happened with Instagram you know, if we hadn't bought it. I don't think it's guaranteed that it would have grown to be as big as it is. Should I assume because I'm a nerd when it comes to watching business behavior that much like what you're doing with Metaverse now, which I think is the macro move of that, and that like in between now and and that scaled world, the companies that have the kernels that do best in the attention grab, whether that's in the metaverse, video, so you know, picture, like that will always be a core focus. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's a key thing with this rebrand to Meta is it's not like now we're not focused on social media. I mean, that's going to be the bread and butter of what we do. That's the the core thing. Um, and our work to build the metaverse encompasses both building social experiences and building these future platforms like um, VR and AR. It's got to be both, right? We have to weave all these new technologies through these social apps, and you know, because you want to be able to jump into the metaverse and a 3D experience from your Instagram feed, right? See your see your friend at a concert. Um, you know, we showed this as part of the keynote presentation. Just dive in and you know, maybe be a hologram at the concert. But but you, a lot of the discovery around that is going to happen through the core social platforms. So, yeah, that's going to continue to be a focus. Um, we're going to keep on on focusing on growing and building apps and adding more social mechanics around that. Um, I think there's a lot more to invent there. Um, and then I think that there's this next set of platforms, right? Where you know, I just you know, one of the things that I, I reflect on a lot is you know, social media kind of grew up with the smartphone. When it comes to these apps and these holograms, or first of all, when it comes to social media, is it? I wonder. I'd be like, Mark, is it the goal? to start replacing traditional media because that's what's already happened. And do you think that eventually social media is going to be the new media and the television and everything like that is basically going to be like newspaper? Like no one's going to, you know, I'm sure there's people watching you read the newspaper, but I'm sure the percentage is low, but is it just going to completely wipe it out? And also you talked about these holograms and these concerts going to concerts and things like that. Well, we're all going to, so is the goal to just keep, I know that experience is good, but is it, 
if people aren't going out anymore and people are just like, oh, I'll just do this at home. Like, are we all going to just be stuck at home? Is that the plan? Or what are some, I guess, what are some negative things that could come up? Because this is all great and cool. It's at like contact lenses and things like that. But it's like, do you foresee any negative effects? Facebook, I started in 2004. Um, I think Apple was probably already working on their iPhone design by then. It came out in 2007. So, you know, we didn't really get to shape what the smartphone was. No. Um, you know, we built a lot of most used experiences for it, but but it sort of co, it, it grew at the same time. And because of that, I feel like the smartphone sort of grew in a way that it's somewhat limiting in terms of the, the type of social experiences that you could have. I, I feel like there's a lot of things that I would love to build that, that we can't build because we're we're kind of constrained into this, you know, little rectangle and, and policies that some other companies set. So that's part of, for me, why I have so much passion about helping to bring about this next platform shift and accelerating it. Because I think the sooner we get to virtual and augmented reality, um, the better, the more magical these social experiences are gonna be. And, and I just think, um, you know, our platforms should be designed around people interacting with each other. I think that's like how we process the world as people. And, um, and that's just not how, how phones are designed. They're designed around apps today. Yeah, uh, but I think, you know, going back to your first question. Sorry, I'm pulling a Gary Vee and interrupting right now. I know he's super giddy to get this type of uh, technology out there, but I wonder how far in advance, Mark, how far in advance do you know when the new technology is rolling out and do you get to test that sort of stuff? And if you do, which I'm sure you do, how do you keep a lid on it? Because I know it, like you got this new invention, this new toy, you want to try test it out and you get to test it out and you know that it's going to be awesome. And you're probably one of very few people who gets to see it before it's released to the world. Like how cool is that? And yeah, that's another question. How many people get to see, like, let's just say they have all this stuff done already, right? In the Facebook basement. Like how many people get to see this before it comes out and the excitement level that you have, how do you keep a lid on it? Um, NFTs and Web3, um, I think the atomic unit in the metaverse is going to be about um, you and, and, and kind of the, your stuff and your friends and your connection, right? So you're going you're gonna to have your avatar and you're going to have your digital clothing and, and your digital tools. And unlike apps today um, that are kind of all designed to be a little bit siloed and you have to do all this extra work to get them to work together, um, in the metaverse, I think it's going to be fundamentally more interoperable where your, your fundamental experience is that you are embodied in your, your identity, your digital avatar, all your stuff. And I think as a you know, as a user of this, your natural expectation is going to be that you can bring all your stuff um, in between all these experiences very seamlessly. So I, I think that that's going to be really exciting. I just want to help bring that about as soon as possible. Mark, question I've been dying to ask you. When you first look, I mean, you probably given, and maybe I'm making assumptions, so you'll speak to it. Obviously, there was that 2017 wave with CryptoKitties. We started seeing that early kind of wave of, you know, NFTs, right? Uh, that was like kind of like the thing that, uh, punks did not hit my radar, but CryptoKitties did in 17. Um, and obviously now this has been the year of NFTs, the way we know them, whether it's Board Ape, what I do with V Friends, obviously punks, and many cool cats, many, many, many projects. One of the reasons it was very easy for me when I really dug in late last year to believe in this was actually because of Farmville on Facebook. Hmm. You know, when, when I, there was two things that happened to me during that era. Farmville on Facebook, oh my God, people are buying these digital sheep because they want the social currency to show their friends they're good at it. And then Zay Frank, I don't remember, I don't know if you remember Zay Frank, yeah. remember? Uh -huh. Zay Frank, who's one of the first video bloggers, he had people buy virtual ducks as little tip jars and have their name hover over it. And those were the first times I was like, oh my God, people are gonna buy virtual things, virtual currency. In my book, Thank You Economy, I talk a lot about virtual currency in 2010, 11. Was it natural for you to believe in what's happening right now with NFTs because of the things like Farmville that happened on your platform? So. I know he just asked Mark a question, but uh, this would be a question for Gary. This is where they kind of, I don't know if they may have lost the audience a little bit, uh, just explaining what punks and kitties are. Uh, he, Gary was just on the Nelk Boys podcast, the Full Send podcast, and he kind of he kind of talks about NFTs a little bit, but it'd be interesting to explain what those two things are. And uh, in his book, Thank You Economy, he talked about digital currency once again how did you know he talks about watching people like i get it but i was there in 2010 no one was talking about it. i think i heard like 
a, a whiff of it for somebody and I didn't quite understand it. And it's like, who are you going to to get this information and how do you study it and how do you do your homework and understand it and get in there? I, I don't know. All right, that does it for part two of this video. But before you go, if this is your first time on this channel, my goal is to help you grow your network and your net worth with video podcasting. So if you have a podcast or you're thinking about starting one, this free download is going to get you started with interviews. It's a list of the top 25 podcast interview questions that will make you sound like a pro so you can become the authority in your niche. The link for this is in the description. And part three is going to be right here. So we'll see you next time.